Okay, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, today I am excited to share with you guys an adventure of a lifetime. Now, if you've been following us on Instagram or Facebook or even looking at some of our posts on YouTube, you may have seen that we recently went on a Jack's World of Wildlife trip to Florida. Now, what we were able to do in Florida was get hands on, in the water, no cages, nothing, free diving with sharks. Now, this was one of the coolest experiences we've been able to do through Jack's World Wildlife, and we were able to see quite a lot of sharks. So, without further ado, let's take a look at what we did on our trip to Florida. There's too many gorillas in my van! What are you guys doing here? You're early. I don't dive with sharks until tomorrow. I'm just trying to get some rest. I'd like to be well rested because um, I need to be alert. I need to be vigilant. I'm hoping to dive with some fantastic species of sharks. I'm really hoping for bull sharks, really hoping for tiger sharks. And I wanna make sure I don't have any inquisitive mouths wanting to taste test any Jack's World Wildlife representatives, okay? I'm in Florida. I'm gonna go swimming tomorrow around sharks. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll find some sharks and maybe, maybe you guys will get to see some sharks and um, maybe, maybe, hey, well, Probably all good to see sharks. I mean, if, if a man's being honest, um, there's there's a real possibility that we'll all get to see sharks. So I'm excited. I've never dove in with sharks before. Um, so I'm very excited to dove um, into the ocean and be one with the cartilaginous of the marine world. So I am, I, as you can, as I'm sure you might be able to perceive through your screens, um, this, this, is, this is a big moment for me. This is like, I mean, I feel like I'm having my quinceanera tomorrow. I'm, excitement just, just churning and oozing out. So, wish us luck. Um, we're, we're gonna go diving with sharks. So. Stay, stay thirsty, stay dreaming, stay watching. Well, that was uh, certainly concerning. All right, guys, so we were in the car. We are headed to Jupiter, Florida. Uh, we're about 15 minutes away. And about an hour from now, we should be well on our way to getting into the water close to some sharks to show you guys. I am super psyched. Um, there's really a chance we could run into any species of shark off the coast of Florida um, that's native to the Atlantic. Um, but we have a really good chance of seeing bulls, tigers, possibly great hammerheads, um, and maybe even some mako sharks and some other stuff. So we are super, super excited. Um, this is gonna be really the closest I've ever been to large sharks. We are free diving. I uh, will not be in a cage today. Um, and I'm hoping for some really great shots and a really cool experience. I'm excited just to have this under my belt. Um, my cameraman is ready to go. So wish us luck. Hopefully we get some really good interaction and um, we don't have anything, you know, too negative. Um, so let's get to it and let's go dive with some freaking sharks. So we hopped in our car, we drove down to meet up with the shark diving group. 
So then we hop on our boat. We go out maybe about two miles off the coast of Florida. And then it's time to get into the water. The first species of shark to show up were bull sharks. Now these are absolutely beautiful animals. Take a look at some of these spectacular sharks that started moving in really quickly. Now, although bull sharks have a pretty serious reputation, they're actually one of the more calm and shy species of sharks to dive with in open ocean. These animals stayed their distance and just observed us from a safe distance, but take a look at these beautiful, peaceful giants just gracefully floating through the water column. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but sharks are actually really hesitant uh, to kind of approach larger organisms in, in the water. And what I mean by that is most shark species are actually preying on uh, food, prey items, that are quite a bit smaller than themselves. Uh, an average shark, even a larger bull shark or lemon shark, uh, really isn't that much longer uh, than a human being, say, swimming around in the same body of water. Uh, so oftentimes, you get to kind of observe a much different type of behavior uh, while swimming with sharks, because sharks aren't looking at you as, as a prey item. They see you as another intelligent, predatory animal. So they are actually very wary. They have an eye on you at all times, and it's best, of course, for you to reciprocate that and keep your eye on them, because should you let your guard down, uh, they will come in closer to investigate. They're extremely inquisitive, and part of the way they experience the world and learn about things uh, is through one of the only um, appendages that they can use to, to touch and feel and sense the outside world, and that is their mouths. Uh, so oftentimes, sharks, without meaning to be aggressive, um, can give you a few little test bites to see exactly what you are. Um, and that, of course, is not what we're wanting to do. Um, but other than that, sharks are actually very skittish and very wary. Um, while we were diving, we wanted to make sure that we, we didn't make any quick movements or, or, or kind of gyrate around in the water quickly because those types of actions can, can convey a lot of negative information towards sharks and they will leave. Um, so we had lowered a cage of, of fish into the water, um, water column to attract sharks. And it was a beautiful day for visibility. I mean, we had probably about 200 feet of visibility. And so we were able to see sharks coming in from quite a ways away. Now, the first few sharks that we had starting to come in were bull sharks. Now, bull sharks get a pretty nasty reputation uh, because oftentimes they're responsible for some pretty gruesome uh, shark interchanges, uh, but they're actually really kind of docile and, and, and timid sharks in the actual water column. A lot of shark attacks are caused by sort of misinformation. Uh, the shark isn't entirely sure what a person might be, or they're just coming to investigate, or they think they can kind of get away with a little test bite, and so they do. Um, but very rarely are sharks actually approaching people as prey items. Another reason why bull sharks are so feared is because of a little thing called osmoregulation. Now that's a big fancy term for essentially controlling the salinity in the water inside their bodies. So you've heard stories of, of bull sharks being found inland in rivers and lakes and things like that. This is because they can actually hold on to salt in their body much easier than a lot of other organisms. So they can swim into fresh bodies of water and not be completely diluted and, and, and robbed of the critical salt levels that they need to survive. And this is an absolutely incredible adaptation because essentially what these sharks are capable of doing is, is traversing from one very different atmospheric environment in salt water to a 
completely different atmospheric condition in freshwater and being able to survive sometimes for days. Some of these sharks have been found 50, 60, 100 miles inland in some of these rivers where they just swim in, see if there's anything to eat, and then they head back out to the ocean to replenish their salt levels. So this is absolutely crazy to me because this is equivalent to, to something like a human being being able to go into an environment of, of pure carbon dioxide or, or, or a completely different atmospheric buildup and being able to breathe and survive. And that's just not possible for most of the organisms on the planet. So it's a really cool adaptation that these particular sharks have, have invented uh, to help them fill different niches and, and get into different environments to find food. Now another species of shark that started coming in uh, was lemon sharks. Now lemon sharks are often not divers favorites because they are a little more cantankerous and inquisitive than other species. In fact, we were on a small group and there were maybe three or four other people on this free dive uh, with myself and my cameraman. And the second this lemon shark actually showed up, everybody got out of the water except for us. And that's because these lemon sharks uh, weren't kind of keeping their distance like the bull sharks were. The bull sharks stayed maybe six, seven, eight feet away. The lemon shark, which was a pretty hefty shark, I would say maybe nine, 10 feet long, um, it would come right up to you. In fact, um, take a look at this footage right here. Uh, I captured this on my GoPro and the lemon shark I had just noticed was starting to come in and it was close on this guy's fins and he was swimming behind me. And so I see our guide kind of slap the water with his fin and I take a look behind me and sure enough, this big lemon shark is coming in. So I say, hey, this guy looks like he's gonna be a little more curious than the rest. I better keep my eye on him. So I turn around and now I'm swimming kind of backwards with my, with my back towards the ocean floor and my stomach towards the sky. And this lemon shark is coming straight for me. And so I actually hold my hand out and you can't see it because it's underneath uh, my GoPro. Uh, but I thought I was gonna have to gently redirect the shark's nose because he was headed straight straight for my chest. I thought surely he's gonna run into me, but right at the last minute, he turned away and you can see that in that footage. Uh, he turned away, uh, but that lemon shark actually stayed really close up to us. Uh, it swam underneath a uh, gauge, my cameraman's legs. Um, it was it was just really inquisitive, trying to figure out where the smell of food was coming from. Uh, and I got a little close for comfort for a lot of these other people, but, but you know, having trained with many other species of dangerous animals, I was like, wow, this is just a really cool experience. And if this shark starts to get a little, you know, pushy, uh, you can easily redirect these sharks uh, with just a, just a gentle push to the nose. Uh, oftentimes just making eye contact with a shark will cause it to redirect itself. Like I said, again, they're very um, non-confrontational, which is really interesting. In fact, a lot of times if you're on a dive with a bunch of smaller species of sharks, um, and a larger shark is starting to come in. You might not even see the larger shark yet, but those other sharks have advanced electrosensory organs all along the face and down the, the lateral sides of the uh, animal. And they can sense when other stuff is kind of showing up and they will just drift away. You'll be like, hey, where all the sharks go? And then boom, you know, a big hammerhead or a great white or a tiger will, will come in. Now. We got to get up close and personal with these two species, bull sharks and lemon sharks, and it was absolutely spectacular. We had great visibility. Uh, we saw a lot of really cool activity. So let's take a look at some more of these sharks. Now sharks, sadly, are one of the most misunderstood animals in our society. And a lot of this is due to the media. One of the big things that Jack's World of Wildlife strives to do, that I strive to do, is to showcase just how important these animals are and, and their role in their own respective ecosystems are. Because without sharks, the health of our marine ecosystems would, would plummet drastically. We need the top predators of the food chain in order to have a healthy and balanced ecosystem. And the problem with negative portrayals or fear mongering or creating animals into these types of horror movie type monsters, it negatively impacts not only how we view them as a society, but how willing we are to put time, effort, and money towards their protection and conservation. 
And we're robbing ourselves, essentially, of these super critically important and fascinating animals because we have decided through movies, video games, media of some kind, that these are scary animals, that they're out to get us, out to attack us, and that we should operate in our best interest by not giving a rat's hoo-ha about these animals. And so what's really, really disheartening to see is just the sheer amount of, of shark finning, which is the act of catching sharks and lopping off their fins to then uh, illegally eat at um, certain Asian restaurants. That's a delicacy in a lot of parts of Asia. Um, and what's, it's just not sustainable. So they actually cut the fins off of these animals and then throw them back into the water uh, to just float around lifeless, uh, sometimes still alive, trying to move uh, without the aid of those fins. So it's super terrible. The problem is not a lot of people are not are, are aware of it. And honestly, when people are aware of it, a lot of them don't care, uh, which is really sad. And, it, and it's because of, of uh, you know, a lot of part, things like Jaws, movies like, like um, the Meg and things that make sharks seem so, so inherently evil when you know they're just animals trying to survive, trying to find their niche and, and succeed in the wild. So sadly, a lot of our larger shark species are threatened or endangered or even critically endangered, um, even if they don't really have a lot of natural predators or any natural predators after a certain size. Um, so this is super disheartening, and like I said, we need to 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 find a passion for these these types of animals and 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 organisms that fill these types of roles in ecosystems because they're super 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 important. Some really great work that I've seen put out about sharks uh, comes from people like Ocean Ramsey, uh, where they where she puts out these amazing documentaries about what all we can do to not only appreciate uh, sharks in their role in the ecosystem, but to uh, do our part to actively protect uh, sharks. Um, and I think that that is super important. I always love to see that type of stuff having more of a more of a relevance in society over, you know, this kind of fear mongering, scary horror movie type stuff that's just not realistic. Now you can kind of see how these sharks kind of move around. They don't really bump into each other. Um, they, there's a lot of pilot fish and, and different smaller species of fish that kind of follow them around, maybe catching bits of food uh, that these sharks are leaving behind. Uh, these sharks are primarily feeding on smaller fish. It's not at all uncommon for, for sharks, even eight, nine, 10 feet long to be feeding on fish about six to 14 inches in length. Uh, so they're primarily uh, piscivores, which means they eat fish. Now there are some other species of sharks, things like basking sharks and whale sharks are filter feeders. So they will actually have these big gaping mouths and lots of these fibrous filters inside those mouths and they will feed on things like plankton and krill, maybe, maybe small bait fish and things like that. And then there are species that, that primarily feed on mammals like great white sharks. Uh, they're feeding primarily on seals, sea lions, things like that. Now we had an absolutely stellar time diving in the water, no cage with these sharks. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned uh, some stuff. I will actually attach some additional links about how we can protect our sharks and what all we can do as individuals um, to support the continuation of these beautiful and complex and pivotal species in their own respective environments. Um, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, that really helps me. And um, stay tuned, turn on post notifications so you don't miss any more videos. If you'd like to get some of these shirts as well, uh, the link is in the description. They're on Amazon. We also have hoodies. Uh, so stay warm, stay watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of Jack's World Wildlife.